The Heroes of Might and Magic series is a legendary franchise that has laid dormant since 2015. Not only was it a great series of strategy games, it was also hugely influential to many other strategy games of its time and even afterwards. Today, we are looking at one such game in early access called Songs of Conquest. Be warned, there will be a ton of comparisons to the series as many of Heroes Might and Magic's mechanics are present here, so let's begin. So you can start the game either in single player or multiplayer, so we're going to start here with the campaign, uh, but we'll move on to talking about skirmishes uh, with the AI later. Uh, so the campaign is laid out in a pretty linear fashion, it's basically a series of missions that need to be completed in each campaign. Uh, so far two campaigns uh, are here as well as the ability uh, to play custom campaigns. So when you add in custom campaigns, definitely a lot of content. So similar to the Heroes of Might and Magic series, you move your armies around the map and armies are led by wielders who can equip various artifacts and learn various skills when leveling up. Uh, each army also has a certain amount of movement points uh, per round and the game goes by rounds uh, instead of days, weeks, and months like the Heroes of Might and Magic series and we'll get into uh, some of the benefits of that later on. Uh, you can also take over minor buildings uh, to provide certain resources, uh, either common uh, resources. I haven't really ran into anything to produce a rare resource, but um, most are just common or maybe some gold, um, as well as other buildings uh, throughout to find various other benefits like to uh, sacrifice some resource or to get a buff or just others that do uh, temporary buffs for the battle. So. Uh, definitely keep your eye out for that. Now battles are very similar to the Heroes of Might and Magic series, uh, specifically with 2 and 3 uh, with the hexagonal uh, grid combat. Uh, later on they were more of a, 4 was isometric and 5 was uh, more of a square but uh, off to a little bit off topic. Uh, so the wielder can cast uh, some spells once they reach a certain amount of essence of 4. An element and all spells for that faction are available right off the bat. Uh, they just have to get that amount of essence in order to cast it. Uh, so no need to learn them. Uh, I'm okay with with this change. It's a different change, not really better or worse, just kind of a change. Uh, wish the wielder could attack though, uh, similar to Heroes of Might and Magic 5, uh, in order to give them more variety outside of the buffs. Uh, one thing I liked about Heroes of Might and Magic 5 is. Uh, you may not have had a spellcaster, but the character would have been very uh, powerful. The general would have been very powerful to uh, strike down their opponent and feel like you know they were assisting uh, in fight outside of just uh, doing spells and their passive uh, buffs. Uh, the game also features momentum, which provides buffs uh, to the army after killing an enemy, and it can get a bit out of hand as you begin to quickly wipe units out, and it makes it really hard to come back once the momentum shifts too strongly. Uh, thankfully, there are still close battles that harken back to uh, peak uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 and 5, uh, so it doesn't always get out of hand, but it can... Uh, uh, on occasions. Overall though the battle system is a lot of fun and definitely interesting. There is some unit imbalance and I'll get to that a little later in this review. So eventually in the campaign I took over my first major settlement and each settlement provides a limited amount of uh, building slots for you to construct. Uh, this can come in either small, medium, or large um, slots and you need to decide uh, what building you want to focus on, either something to generate resources or to recruit troops. Uh, settlements can also be upgraded for more uh, building slots as well as to be able to put up walls. Uh, the walls are just kind of like a barrier to funnel the enemy in, but uh, not much else there, but still kind of a, a unique thing. Uh, new troops uh, can also be recruited and generated per round. Um, so it's very similar uh, to Heroes of Might and Magic 4 in that way, which I do appreciate since I think that game gets uh, overlooked a lot as there was certain mechanics that I wish was in other Heroes of Might and Magic games like 5 and 6 instead of just ditching everything uh, that they did in that game. But again, that's a side, uh, side thing. Uh, also, let me know if you do want me to review Heroes of Might and Magic 4. Uh, so I ultimately prefer this uh, system uh, compared to having a, to wait a week like in other uh, Heroes of Might and Magic games, it keeps the pace up and keeps you moving without having to just sit at your settlement for uh, seven turns just uh, to get some new units. So taking uh, enemy settlements themselves is a bit different here and I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it. Uh, so you can either occupy the place for passive bonuses, uh, raise the settlement, or convert the buildings uh, to your own 
and uh, when you convert you need to keep your wielder uh, inside uh, the settlement so the problem I have is this means that you can only recruit troops from your faction uh, so I'm hugely disappointed with this because uh, one of my favorite things to do in Heroes of Might and Magic and similar games, uh, Lords of Magic especially, I love doing this, uh, was taking uh, different units from different factions to get the best of both worlds. Uh, so f just to kind of go on to the uh, Lords of Magic a little bit, I would have my life archers, my lifelong bowmen, uh, but if I took over the fire, uh, <laughs> fire nation, I would add a sorceress to it, probably use a couple of fire spells, or I would use their demon, like some strong melee units, and just start uh, kicking ass that way. So I would have, okay, I have the best uh, range units in the game, and then I have some really strong melee units. Not the best melee units, but still really, really elite strong ones. Uh, since the ones in uh, the life magic, life realm wasn't too uh, great. Um, so, and this was in Heroes of Might Magic 3, when you create, you know, you'd start with a chaos settlement and then you take over another settlement um, that gives you like human uh, units and then you can mix chaos units with human units and and so forth so not having that ability to do so or really an easy way to do so is a bit disappointing in my opinion for these kind of games I spend most of my time playing skirmishes against the AI so we're gonna just move on to talking about that uh, so uh, recently a random map feature was introduced and I spent a ton of time playing with that uh, definitely something that adds a ton of replay value uh, to the game and devs also posted a way on how to create your own random maps yourself with uh, different parameters uh, so I definitely appreciate that uh, skirmishes can also be played uh, multiplayer as well as uh, both online and hot seat and the fact that hot seat uh, multiplayer is included is much appreciated and really harkens back to old school uh, strategy games when they used to have uh, this kind of local multiplayer so, uh, so much appreciated there so unfortunately I ended up losing uh, my first skirmish I was the uh, lizard faction uh, so I decided to pick uh, another faction and I picked the Baria faction and I got incredibly OP pretty quickly. Um, I ended up finding an artifact that gave me crystals, which led to the construction uh, construction of an armory uh, to help create hell breaths, which are basically cannons. And these weapons had incredible range, damage was crazy high, and everyone adjacent to the blast would get damage as well. And it was like basically 100% in that area. Um, the only downside was that you had to reload. Because the crazy thing is, um, enemies would come up to me and I'm like okay the melee probably sucks and my ca my cannon guy would just punch him and take out like 20 wolves like it was just crazy how OP this unit was um, so it was and I got this this I get it's an elite unit for the faction but I got this like really really early and everything just became incredibly easy and I just knew it was uh, a matter of time and it was like battles that were li labeled as uh, worthy difficulty or on the harder side were actually much easier um, when you actually play them. Uh, so it was fun and cathartic after the first, um, after losing the first skirmish. Uh, but I am concerned now regarding the balance and the random factor of the maps um, because it seems like the first 10 15 turns basically determines how uh, you'll end up being. Because in the first skirmish, I was struggling to beat enemies that were like right next to me. And then in this skirmish, I was just wiping the floor with everyone. And even their lower tier units are pretty good. Like they have pikemen uh, and they can get um, these musketeers. And the musketeer units were actually pretty good too. So they just were stacked from bottom to top with really good low tier units and really, really, really elite, elite units. So... Um, Hopefully there's a ways to like balance it out so you know you don't get too powerful too early because I can see this being a bit of an issue uh, especially in multiplayer uh, when playing with humans and and other people. Uh, the second skirmish also highlighted some uh, deficiencies with the AI that I noticed. Uh, the first battle against them that you'll face in almost any skirmish uh, will be a tough one and probably will be the highlight of your uh, of your skirmish. Uh, but afterwards, it just seems to uh, falter. And just to uh, to state, I am playing on the normal difficulty, uh, so it wasn't easy AI at all. 
or it wasn't listed as easy AI. Uh, so it seems to have an anti-player bias early on and rarely does it go after other AIs uh, in order to consolidate their power. And to be fair, Heroes of Might and Magic's games and other games similar to it have never really had the best AI and often relied on a lot of BS cheating. And side note, there really needs to be an ability to see the, the full freaking map. It's an issue I had with Heroes of Might and Magic and other games where um, Lords of Magic 2 is you would is that the AI basically can see everything because they are the AI they the flag of war doesn't apply to them they see the whole map um, so they're able to get that advantage so I just wish that we could at least see the whole map uh, you can keep the fog of war but can we at least reveal the whole map so I don't end up wasting turns walking into nothingness and then basically that cost me the campaign because I just wasted all those movement points so I just wish that was an option. Uh, so last thing before we wrap it up, presentation wise, I really like the art direction here. Uh, it remind me, uh, reminds me a ton of another game I covered on this channel, Legends of Keepers. And some of the sound effects do as well, um, but I didn't find any kind of relation uh, between the developers. So uh, there may be, but it looks like completely different studios. Uh, the music is uh, serviceable, but nothing uh, too memorable. You can also buy the soundtrack uh, for it which is always something that I appreciate. Overall, I can definitely recommend this one, especially if you're looking for a more modern take on the uh, Heroes and Might and Magic formula. Uh, it has a great solid uh, base here with more content uh, on the way. It has plenty of old school charm mixed with some uh, modern improvements. So I definitely like what I see here. It's a great medley of the two. There are definitely some issues uh, that I do have or some some questionable design decisions like I mentioned with uh, not being able to recruit uh, other units and kind of just sticking with that faction. I think it kind of hurts uh, the game long term, especially um, in my opinion. But uh, thankfully the devs are gr very active uh, with updates and posts. Uh, I would say outside of what I just said, the uh, two biggest issues right now are balancing uh, and the AI. They have up updated the AI uh, recently, um, but I still think there is a good amount of time to go, at least something to balance the early game and not make the body of faction so strong. Um, so definitely that's going to be the biggest things I would like to see them tackle going forward. But overall, like I said, it's a very solid package, and I'm really curious to see uh, where this game goes. So hopefully it just gets better and better from here. Thank you guys for watching as always. Please like, share, and subscribe. This is Powerhouse, signing off.